Hey, oh, I better find something worth finding here. It's upside down. They already said. Hey, flip the camera. Oh, I didn't show you. <laughs> oh, man. Look at me. I look like. Stop the broadcast. Hello. Hey, look, Annabelle's back. Oh, my goodness, me, man. All you guys who worry my wife is, she's Ooh. back. Whoa. But everything's falling down. I don't have here. Oh, go live. Not even live yet. Two. One. Hey, everybody. I want to keep you out late. You know, this is Valentine's Day, Valentine's night. Maybe some of you singles can hang out with us here. But really, we encourage couples to... And I just got in from Aruba. She was, uh, I was unsupervised, as you might realize, this whole week. I had to, like, cook for myself and fend for myself. I did dishes one night. Uh, First I just, time ever. I discovered things I didn't know. I'm so proud. I took off and didn't pack right, didn't even have a wallet. And But I found my way around. Anyway, honey, how was Aruba? She just got Amazing. in. Amazing. It was so great. First, we had, uh, they had the carnival, which is how come I went early than the women's meeting because Who's they they had a carnival a whole nation has a carnival yes it's like in philadelphia they have the mummers parade for new year's in aruba they have the carnival and it's in a lot of sta a lot of places even in baton rouge louisiana because it starts right before ash wednesday i think that the idea is that everybody whoops it up and then they have ash wednesday and they straighten out when they all repeat <laughs> they all party and then they repent. Yeah, but very Catholic. But the thing of it is, the costumes can cost fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh, that's what made you think of the mummers. Yeah, because the costumes are amazing. So I went down there in a photo shoot because I read about it in the magazine in the American Airlines one time, like six months ago. I said, Lance, did you know they had this carnival in Aruba? And you're like, No. I said, Can I go photograph it? And you said, Sure. So I forgot. I went down there to photograph it, and then I asked Pastor Lizette if I could speak at the women's meeting. Because they have women's meeting once a month. And then she invited me in. So Wanda and I went. Delinda couldn't come this time because some things came up. But um, we really had a good time. And the women loved it. And I shared some of your stuff from the Dominican that you used with, uh, you know, the Red Robin. And they got some consulting. We just mixed it all up, you know. Oh, with my client yeah. stuff I used. Well, you know, for those of you, I think there's something redemptive. Well, not redemptive. There's something of value for all of you right on this um valentine's day broadcast and that is that when annabelle loves the photography and she loves to do certain things and so i made a decision i had a realization an epiphany about a year ago that um that my job is for to help her discover what it is she's called to do because her whole life gets absorbed in helping me do what i'm called to do <laughs> And so I wanted to make sure that I was uh, helping her do what she's called to do. And so that was when it crossed my mind when she said, oh, look, what do you think of? I went to Aruba and did this photography shoot. And then, of course, she said, would you want to go with me? And I would have, I could have gone and would have liked to, but I actually had a whole lot of stuff I do have to do with what I'm doing. So I had to stay home and couldn't join her this year. But it really, I was glad that, you know, she got a chance to go do what was meaningful for her. And how many days were you gone? Uh, it's been eight days since I saw you. Eight days. That's a long time for uh, for me to be left unsupervised. So <laughs> I still did my editing every day. Yeah. Look, I can do my work anywhere. So you do her work anywhere. Okay, now let me, let me real quick filter. cover what happened today with the Chief Justice because I'm going to be doing an uh, interview with Mark Nuttall tomorrow. Mm. He's my man who's advised four presidents, uh, done 400 um, campaigns at a federal level in the United States, and I called him up today as soon as this news happened, and I asked him, what does this mean, Mark? What's going to happen? As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, the United States has had a, uh, is, is, is literally being destroyed right now. It's a sad and a tragic thing. There's so many people are uninformed, and they just lump politics and news together. It's like we're, we're really in many ways an illiterate society that we don't know what's going on. That, that would be okay, except... 90 million people professing to be Christians ought to be informed, and 30 million ought to be specially informed that are evangelical and spirit-filled, but they're not really informed because half of them don't even vote. And so it's, it's kind of maddening, in a way, to realize that what the balance of the Supreme Court is President Obama has appointed two, uh, I think it's two he's done, uh, on this, you know, to the Supreme Court, and Democrats, when they're appointing justices, it's almost like it's what uh, Dinesh D'Souza today referred to as Euclidean certainty. Like Euclidean is like a form of geometry. That the Democrats always vote liberal. 
It's the conservatives like Justice Roberts and supposedly Kennedy. He was appointed by Reagan. They vote with the liberals now and then, or they don't vote with the conservatives. So conservatives are actually more open-minded. Liberals are not. Liberals are very locked in. Conservatives, I think, are a broader intellectual bandwidth. They take in a lot more information. And uh, Scalia was one of the most respected and revered personalities that was there on the Supreme Court, and the most outspoken and the most clear about the dangers of judicial activism, which is what Obama's doing. If he can't get stuff done, like, for instance, with, uh, with the marriage amendment, if the majority of Americans don't want it, forget it. I'll go around you and go to the court. Same thing with uh, immigration. Same thing with Obamacare. If the liberal wants something, he, he's going to get it one way or the other, and you're going to learn to like it. You're going to learn to love it because they're enlightened and you're not, and you need to get up with the, their enlightenment. And so um, it's scary that once in 80 years has a sitting president appointed a Supreme Court justice, and it was Justice Kennedy. The, um, the rule of tradition is that in an election year, you let, you let the country decide what office it wants in the White House, and then let that administration put forth its candidate. This president, I knew it within a heartbeat. He won't wait a day. I mean, the body will still be, you know, having an autopsy done, and he's going to announce, I'm appointing a new judge. Because he can't help himself. He is an activist. Remember, he went to Washington as an activist senator who came out of community development, community activism, which was basically a, um, a code word for being an Alinsky um, organizer. In the, in the cities for political uh, for, for purposes that didn't have to do with what you think it meant. He wasn't organizing block parties. So um, the, uh, if, you, if I feel, if I sound a little bit sober tonight, it's because it's a strange thing when you see in an election year with all the challenges that we have and the difficulties that we have uh, to see that even one of the balancing factors in the balance of power in the courts is now been pulled out. And so we have to actually fight just to stand still, to replace them. To replace them with a decent candidate is going to be a battle. And that gives us no ground taken. How important is it for the next president of the United States? We need to pick that one wisely because I don't know why it is, but these other guys in the late 80s and 90s or whatever, uh, there's going to be two or three other seats that will be turned over. I wasn't expecting Scalia to die. But everybody expects there's going to be some justices that are going to step down and step out. Um, Marco explained to us that, you know, courts can continue to function. They have big cases coming to them. But if the courts, can't, if the courts are stuck four to four, if they can't get, uh, you know, an agreement on, on, uh, on a policy, it just gets shut back to a lower level court for, for a decision. And it can always get kicked back again to the Supreme Court when there is a majority that can, uh, can vote. So it's not like everything gets gridlocked. It doesn't get gridlocked. They just have to, then if the cases are really going to be 4-4, four, four, then you know what? The Supreme Court is nothing more than a political entity. There is no intellectual integrity there. If everything is a 4-4 four, four decision, or it's, if everything breaks on party lines, man, you know, then we really have to start to win the battle by reshaping the conscience of America at the street level. Because if we keep on getting caught dysfunctionally with each other, and it gets kicked up to the court to decide, well, then we, all that we are is a litigious society that has to be managed by judicial fiat, by somebody telling us what's right and wrong and true and false, because we've lost our moral compass. It's interesting that Stalin, I heard, uh, I heard Ben Carson say this tonight, and if he did, I want to check it out. Maybe you guys could check it out. He said, Stalin said it takes three things to destroy a country, a democracy, like the United States. You have to destroy their spirituality. You have to destroy their culture. You have to destroy uh, their morality. If you can affect their spirituality, uh, their culture, and their morality, then, then you can take out the nation. I mean, was that right? Spirituality, it was morality, spirituality, and the third thing, I think it was culture. So, um, so we are, uh, we're right now, we've, had, we've been set back in those three areas for at least eight years now. So, um, in the name of Jesus, let's pray. Father, we thank you. That you are, you are the ultimate one who cradles the, that the prayers of saints do matter for the nation. You hear the righteous, Lord, and there are, must be some righteous that are praying right now for America. There has to be those whose prayers you can hear. For the sake of ten righteous, you would save the city 
of Sodom and Gomorrah. You're just looking for a remnant sufficient to justify grace. In this jubilee year, Lord, this jubilee year, we pray that you will put your hand over the United States. Give the Senate the backbone it needs. Let them see the voter disposition this year is not a disposition to thwart. And let them have the strength to hold the line and not allow an ungodly and unrighteous determination of an appointment to be made. Lord, the United States belongs to you and not to man. It belongs to you, and in the name of Jesus, we pray that America shall be saved. Its, its moral clarity will be restored, and that you will raise up oracles that will so clarify and shift the debate that is confusing the minds of people that the Elijah anointing will come down, and the country will stop halting between two opinions on everything, from sex to gender to, to, to socialism versus capitalism, Lord. This division that has been working by a playbook, even in this administration, to divide races, to divide genders, to divide uh, ec economic classes. Lord, this division, we curse the division at the root. And we pray for a unifying that will come under the spirit of Elijah. For when Elijah came on the scene, the, uh, the people were no longer going to halt of two opinions. For the Lord, he is God. 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 We pray, Lord, for a revival, for an awakening. But not just, Lord, a, a movement among us that are already saved, but an awakening of conscience, an awakening of clarity, an awakening of clear principles and values that will come from the house of God revived to the unsaved secular institutions, media, arts, sports, business, commerce, politics, raise up powerful men and women on the college campuses that will refute, Lord, the intimidation of the intellectual demons operating through the high places of uh, liberal uh, cloaks in the, uh, in, the, in the academic offices. I pray, Father, for a movement of God, for a generation of Wesleys and Whitfields and young Finneys to rise up in their 20s and teens that will be endowed with the spirit of wisdom from on high. And I pray, Father, for joy. I pray for joy that we can begin to reach in to the power of the kingdom of God, the power of the age to come, the power of the spirit realm. For the church has existed in Roman persecution. It's existed in rough days and hard times and had joy because it took over the atmosphere and it competed with the prevailing culture and authority of the day, yes. and it threw down the gauntlet of the yeah, demonstration of the power of the age to come. Let us have joy tasting the kingdom and the power that is coming. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Father, for the families and marriages and the children. This is the year of the home advantage. This is the year when we're coming back to the garden. This is the year to strengthen and draw and rebuild the walls around America. In Jesus' name, that America will not have its its worst days in front, but it's best days, for we shall be saved in Jesus' name. And our household. And our household. You should be saved. You and your household. The home advantage. Amen. Amen. Any final thoughts there, Annabelle? I would just say, I think we have to keep praying. I didn't feel like that was a complete release, but I liked everything. It wasn't a saying. complete release. Was, no, it I was wasn't. agreeing with you, too. And it I, wasn't. It wasn't was the breakthrough prayer yet. No, but I was picturing everything you were saying, and it's so important that we continue in that. We need to really need to press in. And Kim Clement, I understand, is going in for a procedure tomorrow. <clears throat> Let's pray for him. So right we now. just pray for our friend. You go ahead and pray for Kim. Lord, we love Kim. We, we love him. We thank you, Father, you've given us us and us friendship and that you've given him to the he nation of America as a prophet that lives in our land. I thank you, Lord, for the words of life that will come into his spirit and just the ruach, the breath of God to fill him, Lord, the blood of Jesus to cover him, and that the surgeons will be keen to discover everything that they're seeking. Lord, we thank you that you give him that nice, pivotal day tomorrow where things are going to start to change and he's going to have the fullness of his youth back his body, his health, and restored in his full mind in Jesus' name. The fullness of his youth back. This will not age him, Lord. I thank you that he's just going to be amazing. And he'll go back to the moment where he would think, I didn't know if I was going to come back <laughs> this strong. And he's going to be stronger than he ever was. I believe that. That's how I see him when I pray for him all the time. Stronger I mean, and younger. Younger, youthful.
What a blow to the devil that would be. It is going to be. I'm so excited that they let everyone know that this is the pivotal surgery, right? I believe we hear it. We've heard the Lord on that, and I believe we're in agreement on that. We need to just pray in the Spirit all day tomorrow, because we don't know how to pray. Amen. Well, we go. There we go. There we go, people. All right. <laughs> my prayer didn't. Be my prayer didn't go through what Annabelle's did. What? My prayer didn't break through. Oh, mine didn't either. I didn't no, know. I think it did. I think it did. I feel like it did. We're gonna just keep, We're it to keep up. up right. America's tougher than Kim. <laughs> Kim breaks through. America. The needs, prophet must break through. Lance. The prophet broke through. Lance, yes. Oh. America's got to break through. <laughs> All right, listen, people. 9.5 pH and higher. That's alkaline. Alkaline your body. Keep your body alkaline. And uh, we'll keep you posted. 7 I'm Underground, we have a we have an uncorked thing coming up, but I don't feel like talking about all that now. <laughs> I just feel like we just pray. We just go there. I'm putting this up right here in front of the screen on my periscope because we have, I want the final image to be of the pieces and the wheels of your life coming together because God's putting the wheels together, my friends. This is a Destiny Dashboard product. We're going to be helping to raise up people that are putting the pieces in place with strategies for their life. We love you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.